So we're on our way over to Mobile, Alabama this morning to uh, pick up the uh, Dake Arbor Press that I purchased from Andrew Alexander. So uh, this uh, this press, it's a it's a floor model Arbor Press, a 15 ton. And uh, what was uh, interesting about this particular press is that uh, Andrew found it and uh, bought it, and uh, it's it's never been used. It's it's like NOS. So the, the person he bought it from, they actually never used it and never actually finished putting it together. It was stored outside for a short period of time, so it's got a little bit of rust on some of the bare metal, but it's never been used. And these are uh, pretty expensive when you have to buy them new. So Andrew gave me a great deal on it, and it's uh, it's been one that I've uh, wanted for the shop for a long time. Never run across the right deal until now, so I uh, picked it up. And the reason why I'm going to Mobile to actually get it is because the uh, the shipping for it was $300 cheaper to ship it to the dock here uh, using YRC freight to Mobile. We don't YRC doesn't have a freight dock in Pensacola. They have one in uh, Mobile, and to ship it from Dallas to Mobile dock to dock was only I think it was $130 versus over $400 doing it from his place. Uh, drop and ship it to uh, to my place. So I opted for the $130 option to drive over to Mobile, which is only 45 minutes, and uh, just pick it up there. So that's what we're doing. So we're on our way there now. Might give you a couple cool shots of the causeway and the tunnel going through. And it's uh, it's not too far after the tunnel that we got to turn off. So we'll uh, we'll be there shortly. There we go, he's loading her up. Yeah. All right. All right, we've got a successful load of the uh, Dake Arbor Press here. Uh, we're at the uh, YRC terminal in Mobile, Alabama. So it looks like the Dake Press survived uh, with no problems, and we've got her secure we've got four straps holding her down we got four uh, we got two up top one pulling it back uh, in each direction there looks like she's ready to go so my new d-rings that i welded on are serving to, to work perfectly like i wanted to Everything is working out real well there. So I better get on out of here. We got some trucks pulling in. So let's get on out of here and head on back to the house.
into Mobile Bay going across the causeway. Perfect day to go pick up a machine. It's been beautiful weather for weeks. And today, this morning actually, we had a system come through with the rain. Perfect timing. Coming up right there is our new Bucky's. The only one outside of the state of Texas, I believe. At the Baldwin Beach Expressway exit. That's the road that takes you down to Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. There it is, the Bucky's. Got like, I don't know, like 150 gas pumps, I think. That's the only thing at that exit. This used to be nothing but farmland right there. Totally congested this intersection now with uh, traffic. We made it home safe, and I'm always happy to say that in these videos. It always makes me nervous whenever I make these hauls. You know, there's a whole, a lot of things that could go wrong, and and things go through my mind whenever I'm doing it, but made it home safe. All of our straps are still tight. Nothing came loose. Our new tires did good. No blowouts, no wrecks on the interstate. So we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on getting this thing unstrapped. So this, uh, this ramp system works real good for me. So I dropped the tailgate there and I used my pallet jack to come in there just at a straight angle and I'm able to get it with the pallet jack and just roll it right on off. So I'll, I'll hook the cameras up and give you a shot of me doing that. So here's the problem that I've run into. The skid that the machine was uh, mounted to was only big enough for a fork, for a forklift to grab it. The pallet jack is too wide to be able to get up underneath there. So I can't get the pallet jack in there to grab it, which was what I wanted to do to unload it. So I'm gonna have to actually jack this thing up block the whole thing up so that I can get the pallet jack under it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to um, get it up on each side a little at a time and use my blocks over here, these wooden wedges. We'll use these to continue to wedge it and block it up enough to where I can get the pallet jack up underneath it. All right, new plan. I'm gonna to continue to block it up. What we're gonna do now, realize there's only two of these boards. See that side just come off. We got that one in the middle. All I gotta do is just knock those off there. And then I should be able to get the pallet jack underneath the, uh, the machine right there. I think that'll work. So I'll have to knock them off this other side over here, just like we did on this side right here. I think we might be able to get it there now.
gonna chalk it back up. need to get that other board out of the way because it's I need to off center it there's too much weight on the front so let me do that all right I think we got her that time always a little bit of a crash coming off there because you got to go from the the deck to the ramp and then from the ramp to the concrete and it happens like at the same exact time uh, both wheels of the pallet jack so let's get her inside All righty, here's our first look without the plastic on it. So this is a model 401 AP. So I believe this, this is an older model that's obsolete, not around anymore. And uh, it should be a 15 ton. I don't know that to be fact yet. I'm still trying to research it, but we believe this is a 15 ton. It is one of the compound lever action. You've got a sliding pin right there where you can actually move the position of the uh, the lever up here into two positions so it's supposed to be one position i believe is supposed to be like seven and a half ton and the other one's going to be 15 tons on the uh on the gear there so i'm going to dig into that and uh, make sure that that's what it is not that i'm going to be applying that kind of tonnage to it but we're just trying to identify what it is right there so <clears throat> came with the original daisy wheel there we got the handle this is the lever that you use it's just a counterweight that catches the uh, rack down there that holds the table up in place and this I mean that's obviously just some kind of catch can I don't really know what it is other than just being a catch can maybe for cutting oil and chips so the the bad the only thing bad about this it's not really bad but it is sort of a uh, a bad strike is the hand wheel so this should have a hand wheel that goes on it this is the, the hand wheel that you use to move the ram up and down quickly and it was supposed to be with this press but the owner could not find it it was lost and he couldn't find it so we just had to forget about that so we're gonna have to uh, replace it with one and McMaster car actually sells a couple versions of that hand wheel on their website they have an aluminum and a cast iron one so that's gonna be a lot easier than, than fabricating one so we'll probably just buy a hand wheel and all I got to do is machine it to fit on this shaft right here I believe this is inch and a half in diameter so we'll just uh we'll fix that up make us a hand wheel for it and that'll be all we need just besides some general cleanup that we got to do it's got rust because it was sitting outside for a while so we'll do some rust cleanup on it i'm not going to worry about painting it it's just fine the way it is all right as far as the other stuff that was on here as well so here's the here's the handle for it it has got a big gigantic uh counterweighted handle See right there it says 415p. That's why I was thinking it was the 415. 
That right there says 401 AP. I'm not really sure what's up with that. Now, when you look on the website, it's called the Model 5. They just simply call them models like one through five, depending on the, the tonnage that they are. This was some other pieces that I bought. These are parallels. I gotta cut these, cut that open. And I'm not sure what this is. This this might be some more parallels right there. I bought a, a lot of parallels from, from him. So there was a vice that was sitting up here too. And that's this guy right here. Now this was uh this was one that Andrew threw in for me that uh he he said I could have. This is an eight inch Wilton Tradesman. This is the same same type vice that I used at work when I was at Motion. I had mounted on my table there. I had gotten it brand new whenever I was with Motion. And I always liked this vice. I mean, it's actually a very well built vice for the, the vices that you can buy today. And so it says eight inch jaw. And I think for the, the vices that you can buy brand new today, this is a very good vice. You got a lot of jaw width right there, and these are pretty stable vices. Does it? It didn't come with the the base there, the rotating base. And they, as always, they're usually missing their little cap on the end, but that's okay. But this thing is still in really good shape. I mean, as far as the the screw and the movement, there's nothing wrong with this. This is a good usable vice. Need to get some new jaws for it. Maybe make some jaws. I don't know. But anyway, Andrew threw that in because he does not like these <laughs> he don't like these vices he, he just he don't like them so he let me have it so thanks andrew for throwing that one in and uh, we'll make sure that we do something good with it later down the road all right so let's get those crates open and see what's in over there so these are the other goodies that were hiding in the wooden crates that uh, i bought from andrew so i've got two sets of parallels right here and these are some things that he picked up in his travels that uh, he offered up to me and gave me a good deal on them so this pair of parallels right here, I believe these are shop made parallels. They're very big and heavy. And they also say, they say die rail. Up here it says die, and then down there it says rail. And then there's two num numbers on there. It says five and then 68. That could be a date, you know? So it could be 1968 that somebody had made those. I don't know, I'm just guessing but there's not, a, there's not anything else on the back side. So as far as the size goes, I believe they were, let's see how long they were. So 15 inches long, and they were uh, two inches thick, and four inches high, and probably a matching, a matching pair. So we might have to see about our, see if we can talk our buddy Lance into maybe dusting those things and getting them perfectly parallel with each other and square but those are just beautiful shop made parallels right there so very nice set these right here go great with let's just go over there and i'll show you these go great with the shaper right here if you'll see this vice look at that it is a perfect match for the big shaper vice there and that's why that's why i got them so nice having that kind of stuff and hopefully one of these days down the road we'll have us a nice big shop with maybe some more bigger big machinery in here like a horizontal board mill or something like that so this is the other the other pair of parallels right here now i appear i, I think that this used to be one and it was cut so you've got this one here you've got a factory in right there you can see how thick it is and it's machined on the end now this one down here, you can see it's cut there on the end. It's real thin here. And then both of these have been bandsawed. You can see a bandsaw cut there on both of them. So I'm thinking that maybe this was part of that and it was cut, or maybe there's some pieces missing out of it all together. Uh, but anyway, you still got some good parallels and these, these could be scraped in and used for straight edges or you can use them for parallels on uh, you know, like a bore mill table or anything like that. I've got some big ones similar to that. They're just a little bit different. I got them right here. And I used to use these on the Kearns horse on a board mill. I got those from Jack Hoying a while back. You know, sometimes you just gotta have a big set of parallels for big jobs. But the cool thing about these guys right here, these are made by Bush. Uh, let's see, it's read, read it this way. See, it says Bush right there. So Bush Industries made really high quality machine tooling like this right here. 
uh, parallels and things like that. I've actually got a couple uh, sets of uh, really nice parallels that were made by Bush Industries. They were just as high quality as uh, like a brown and sharp parallel. So whenever he showed me the Bush um, casting in there, I definitely wanted to pick that up. So he gave me a great deal on these, these tools right there. So thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. I finally got the press all figured out and uh, I made a couple little pulls on it to, uh, you know, the first time I've ever used one like this. So getting this mechanism and the placement of the, uh, the handle here figured out took me a minute and I actually had to uh, make another pin to tr try to figure out the placement of this guy right here. So I thought I'd give you guys an overview of, of how it works and just kind of go over it. So you've got two positions that this handle could be in. And if, I'm, if I've got the, the right tonnage, if I'm telling you correctly, you've got a 7.5 ton and a 15 ton. So this pin position here is going to be 7.5 ton. And in this position here, where it's actually set at right now, is going to be a 15 ton. And then, and then you got the hand wheel that goes on here as well that's missing. I already told you about that. And that's just so that you can move this, uh, this rack up and down rapidly, you know, to position it where you want it. All right, so where it's positioned right now. You've got a gear and a pawl up here. So you've only, you only get one or two, looks like one or two of the, uh, the gear teeth engaged every time you pull it down. And that's for the, the full 15 ton, all right? So you can position the the pin down to this side and it actually moves faster but you lose leverage on it and that's when you reduce it by half and get it down to seven and a half tons. So I'll pull you up in here so you can I can show you how how this works and I believe there's actually a pin missing. I believe there's an extra pin that goes in here that was probably with the press originally from date and it's probably got lost so I just I've got another one that I'm, I just got a piece of one inch right here that I'm going to use, but I'm actually going to machine another pin that's going to go in this hole right there. That way it'll go in. It needs to go in and stop because it, it can't go all the way across there. So I'm going to machine one that goes in and actually stops in the proper place. This was the original pin that went in back here, and it's been ground on a couple times, and it was real rusty originally from being out in the weather. Uh, Andrew took it apart to get it, you know, get this all apart for shipping purposes and it flared the ends a little bit. So I just decided to replace this one right here and I made a brand new pin. That's what I just did is put that one in there. All right. So here it is set up working on full tonnage, 15 tons. You can see the gear here, the pawl is in the back. And this guy back here, see this is the counterweight that helps bring the lever all the way back up. So. It'll make it fall and bring the handle all the way up whenever you're not using it there, all right? So, what you wanna do, if you wanna, if you wanna drop it from 15 down to seven and a half, you have to pull this pin. You see there's a pin right here. I can pull all the way out, but you just pull that one. You see, it moves your handle out. And that's where you gotta have, I think you gotta have a short pin that actually goes from here to here. You don't want it to go all the way in. So we'll just take this one. And we're just going to install it right there. So you just pull that one out. All right. And now it's just moving the whole thing. And this is the one 
it'll drop on you. You're not supposed to go past horizontal position because it'll it'll fall all the weight of the rod out here. But you see how much faster that the uh, ram is moving now, advancing. And I'm using these uh, smooth jaw wrenches right here just to uh, grab the shaft to be able to bring the rack or the gear back up to be able to do it some more. And this is a lock right here too, by the way. You can kind of lock it in there. All right, so I want to go back to 15. Just push that pin back over and pull that one out. Now we're back into 15. So I had a piece of board right there that I put some pressure on. And I'll show you. We'll go ahead and put a little press on it again. Now I can't advance the next tooth. It's springing back up. <laughs> that's all it's got right there. And then that's where you take the hand wheel and just bring the ram right back up out of your way. So, so if you want to position the table, you use the uh, crank handle right here, and then you have a paw here that catches this, this rack, and then this is sort of like a counterweight that keeps that engaged. But if you want to bring it up, just crank it up like that. Now if you want to go down, bring it up, pull this lever up, and then lower it down. And then drop it in, and then it catches. So it's just it just catches that gear down there, and and then can't allow it to go any further down. So it's pretty quick and e easy. Everything just needs to be clean, get the rust off, and then oil everything real well so that everything moves nice and easy. Right now it's just kind of stiff. That's it. That's the topmost position right there. And then you got your. Uh, your uh, what people like to call your daisy wheel, your press wheel, that you can rotate around to your different positions. So, another piece that we need to get good and clean. You can lower it all the way down if you want to. And then this guy, I'm not really sure exactly what this is, but I would consider this being, you know, a catch can. It's solid cast iron, so, any of your cutting oils, if you're uh, over here doing broaching, this would be excellent to catch all your cutting oil to keep it from getting down into the floor and it also uh, collect chips. So I'm not sure if that's what this is intended for because of the cutouts there, but I mean that's what it'll be used for anyway, so that's pretty cool. Well guys, hopefully you had a little bit of fun with me today going over and picking up the press and uh, checking it out, getting it inside and seeing what it's all about. So I'm very happy to have this piece of machinery in the shop. Thanks to Andrew for uh, giving me a good deal on it. Very happy to have it. So I look forward to uh, getting to it one day and getting it cleaned up all the way and uh, getting it set up and being able to use it around here. So very, very excited about having this. Hope you enjoyed watching and I uh, hope you stick around and, and uh, come back for some more video content. All right, we'll see you on the next video.